everyone, The Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to this video. Back in 2013, I showed you guys my first ever digital camera that um, I ever had as a teenager. And that was a Kodak MC3 digital camera. Uh, this camera had a couple tricks up its sleeve in that um, it could well, like most digital cameras, it could record video as well as take stills, but it could also be an MP3 player. Now this camera was pretty good, but unfortunately the limiting factor was its VGA resolution. So in 2003, Aldi actually had a special on, as they quite often did. And what this was was for, well, it was for a Medion digital camera. So, with that in mind, I actually uh, went to Aldi and um, my mother actually bought me said digital camera, which was uh, awful nice of her. So thank you very much for that. So, let's have a look at this camera. Well, let's take it out of the case that came with it. There you go. Now, you probably have a few questions. For example, why did you place it so far away? Where's the rest of it? Did you wash it at too high a setting? Well, the answer to all of those questions is it's on the desk, same as uh, most things I place in front of uh, this camera. Um, this is the entire digital camera. It did come with a tripod, but um, I've lost it because I'm an idiot, let's be honest. And no, I have never washed this digital camera onto higher setting. So, what is it then? <clears throat> well, this is um, the Medion MD7466 digital camera, um, known by Windows for some reason as a Slim 3000. Probably, this is probably actually um, what the camera was built on, because I can't imagine Medion actually built this camera themselves. Um, I do have this feeling that what they probably did was to get, um, you know, to actually have an OEM to uh, make, make the cameras and then they just kind of put their name on it. Nevertheless, still a pretty decent camera. So uh, let's have a wee look at it then. So um, you can definitely tell it's from the mid-2000s as, um, as you can find it is very silver. And on the front, you have this uh, brushed aluminium, aluminium effect. So on the camera itself, <coughs> we have um, a Zenon flash. We have a, um, a 3.5 millimeter lens, which actually does have um, focus settings. You've got um, regular and then you've got um, macro so that's useful if uh, you wanted to take a picture of something very close up on the top of the camera we have the uh, shutter button we have the power switch on the left side of the camera we have the USB the mini USB connector and we also have a wee slider which if you uh, if you push on it, brings up a tiny wee viewfinder. Look at that. And then on the rear of the camera, you have a screen. I'm not sure what dimensions it is. Um, up and down buttons, which also work as zoom buttons. Have a microphone for video recording. Um, a button that turns the display on and off 
and a menu button which cycles through the various modes this camera has. And then on the bottom you have somewhere to mount the camera on a tripod. Which, like I said, it did come with one, but um, I've lost it over the years. Now this camera takes um, two AAA batteries, give it um, a fair amount of life, I'd say. And the resolution, well, specs of this camera, you've got your 3.5mm th uh, lens. Um, <clears throat> and that, um, that can take pictures with uh, a CMOS sensor. It's, um, the... Well, the, the actual maximum natural resolution of this camera is 1600 by 1200. Um, or I believe that's 2 megapixels. But it does do 3.1 megapixels interpolated. Now, you might be wondering, what is interpolation? Is that pertaining to... An international police organization? No. Interpol? No. In fact, I have not really known up until recently what it was myself. And I'm going to try and explain it to you. So, this is from a website called Camera Bridge in Colour. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll knock the lighting off. And it shows a very simple example of how digital image resize interpolation should work. So, in the case of this camera, what it would do is it would take the 1600 by 1200 image, if you had it on the uh, 2048 by 1536 setting anyway, it would take the 1600 by 1200 image enlarge it somewhat and then use interpolation to actually fill in the missing pixels that weren't captured. Now what interpolation attempts to do is to fill in these missing pixels and it does that by taking a look at um, the pixels around it. So another example of what uh, this might be this website uh, camera bridge in color dot com actually had was um, you know let's imagine you know taking interpolation itself as a concept let's imagine you had um, temperature data for 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. but you wanted to uh, you wanted to you know record a time for 12 p.m. Well, what you could do is you could take the temperature reading from 11 a.m. and the one from 1 p.m. and you know, just kind of guess in that way. We see that um, the temperature rises from 21 at 11, uh, well, rises from 20 degrees at 11 to 22 degrees at 1. So one might assume that um, it actually rose to 21 degrees at noon. So that's basically just, you know, a guesstimate of the temperature. And that's literally what interpolation is. It's an educated guess based on data that you have, surrounding data. Now, if we added, um, if we added the temperature from 11.30 a.m., then what we can actually see is the bulk of the uh, temperature increase took place before noon. Now, so as we have, as we add more data around what we're trying to guess, we could come up with a more educated guess. And that's essentially how image interpolation works. Basically, looks at the pixels around the missing ones and fills it in the way that it best can with the image it has. Yeah, suffice it to say, when I got this digital camera and it was like, oh, it's 3.1 megapixels, bracket, smaller, uh, smaller text, interpolated. Basically, 
yeah, I just kind of ignored it. To be honest, I've never really used that setting. I probably should have done, but um, to be honest, this camera, and, and we're, start, we're starting to actually uh, see some of its um, limitations, some of its limitations now, even compared to the uh, Kodak MC3, this camera has 16 megabytes built in. And you might think, well, okay, your Kodak MC3 had a 16 meg CF card, so what's the beef? Well, the Kodak MC3 had a 16 meg compact flash card, which meant it was storage that could be removed, taken out, and replaced with another compact flash card. Or, you know, you could probably buy a bigger compact flash card. This, you're stuck at 16 megs. So, if you take too many images at high resolution, you're just not going to have enough memory on there for all those images. And you can't expand the memory in any way on this digital camera. Which actually is quite a shame. But, uh, you know, if I was going away, I would, you know, I would more often than not have a computer with me. But still, you know, I did... Um, I did <clears throat> take a lot of pictures on any given outing, so, you know, I felt that um, having it set at uh, 1600 by 1200 was the best compromise between quality and and space. And considering that the um, 3.1 megapixel interpolation was just an interpolation, really didn't matter to me. But, um, I'll tell you what, we will have a go at this interpolation nonsense in a wee bit. Anyway, something this camera also has while we're speaking about interpolation is digital zoom. Now, I used it once and it was basically just a, a spooge of colours. It was, it looked absolutely horrible. Don't ever use digital zoom, kids. It's not a good idea. Anyway, let's switch this camera on. So when you switch it on, it blanks the display, and then it does a uh, kind of a beepy, techy sound while it charges up the flash. And there you go, you're ready to take the picture. And no, I don't know why this stripe is here either. To be honest, it's been there basically since basically since not long after I've had the camera, but it's never gotten any worse. So yeah, I've never really done anything about it. Now I will say this about Medion. I bought the I got the original camera in two thousand and three, but it developed a fault where the flash wouldn't work, but it would constantly try and charge it up even if I didn't want the flash. So, what I ended up doing was, um, well, my mum actually phoned up Medion, explained the problem, sent the camera back, and then with, within a couple of weeks, a new one arrived, brand new. And I thought that was brilliant. So, you know, really quite good customer service on Medion's part. Anyway, Let's have a go at taking a picture. Camera is obviously switched off because I wasn't using it. So if I press menu, I've got pictures here. So as you can see, I can you know I can uh, skip back and forth through them. Look at them on the um, LCD screen. Got a video mode, and for some reason. There's no speaker on this camera, so I can't. I can watch the video, but I can't actually listen to it. I have to download. I have, actually have to download the movie to a computer in order to do that. This camera also has a timer mode, so you know, I can take a picture, press the shutter button.
and it'll give a wee countdown. And there you go, taking a picture. And then it's charging the flash back up. So then you've got to cycle back through the modes again. Then you've got your menu. <coughs> so you can delete all, format the camera. Um, you've got your quality. So you either have 1024 1024 by 768, 1600 by 1200, or 2048 by 1536, and that's the interpolated mode. Um, then you use the shutter button as the OK button. Um, flash, well, flicker, you can have it either at 50 or 60 hertz. So that would... Um, you know, basically counteract for flicker of uh, fluorescent lights or even CRT monitors, should they be set to 60 hertz. Then you've got your language, and then you've got the flash, which you can have off or auto. So let's take a good old-fashioned picture. Okay, so here's the subject of the photograph, my main computer. One thing that I did find as well about this camera is, well, look at the lousy, look at the lousy area of focus. This camera's got worse tunnel vision than I do. But, never mind. I've got to be careful not to have my fingers in front of the flash because it's really good at picking that sort of stuff up. Something else that you've got to do with this camera is make sure that you do not shake the camera in any way, shape or form. You have to be literally perfect. Something I'm not. Um, I do have the shakes and this camera has no, no image stabilisation at all. Which explains why I would take so many photographs. Anyway, let's let's see if we can get a good one. I think I was quite shaky on that one. So that's not really going to do anything. This is basically one of the uh, problems I had with this digital camera when it was my main one. Oh! <laughs> ah, and... <laughs> Now we're getting to the nub of why I don't use that other mode, the 3.1 megapixel mode. Memory is full. But to be fair, I did have quite a few photographs on there. And that is a brilliant segue, actually. Because when you get a digital camera, especially when you got one in the, uh, well, in the early days, half the excitement, at least for me, was um, the software that it came with and the process of uploading the images to a computer. So what we'll do now is we'll move over to a computer, not this one, but uh, a computer from around the time when this digital camera was new. We'll install the software and we will upload the images. So who would have thought that after all these years and 26 million moves that I would still have the original install CD that went to this digital camera. Well, I do. And it supports Windows 98 Second Edition, 2000 ME and XP. So let's, well, let's install it. Now, technically speaking, on Windows XP, 
you really don't need this software because the camera basically works as a mass storage device driver and actually XP's um, way of um, downloading photographs from the camera is actually a lot more pleasant than this software's but um, yeah, I'll show, the, I'll show them both to you actually so we've inserted the CD into the laptop's optical drive and we've got a few things Slim 3000 that's um, the digital camera software you lead Photo Express, you lead Photo Explorer, um, Picture Show that uh, allows you to make uh, picture slideshows for uh, CD, DVD, Video Live Mail, I guess that allows you to send video clips via email, um, CA Magic, still not sure what that does, and of course the Slim 3000 manual, of which at one time when I had the box to this camera, I would have had the manual in paper form. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and install, tell you what we'll do, we'll install the actual digital camera software and we'll install ULead Photo Express. I'll not install Explorer though because that has been known to mess up systems. And now, obviously, because the digital camera software has been installed, there's now a nice wee tick. And apparently we need DirectX 8.1. Uh, nope, I don't believe we will be installing that. I'm on Windows XP. So what I'll do instead is I'll start ULead Photo Express install, and the installer for that. Perfect. This is a perfect time, not necessarily to have to make a cup of tea perhaps, unless you've got a really slow optical drive, but, but to certainly have a few helps of a cup of tea. Okay, after a wee bit the uh, software is now installed. So, now to connect up the digital camera. Um, and really, it's very simple, all you do, take a standard USB to mini USB cable and then you plug it into the camera to which it starts installing the drivers and software needed. Cool. So now we are in the uh, Slim 3000 software. Actually, what I will do is I will, I will, well, actually, no, I'll use the Slim 3000 software to uh, download the po photographs and then we'll compare it with uh, Windows XP's way of doing so. Um, do you wish to download photos from? camera. Very simplified English here. Yeah? Um, okay, now this is something that's always wor worried me. Enhanced. Does it somehow download a lower resolution version of the photographs? I, I've never really understood what that option meant, but I've always ticked it because, well, I just bought a new digital camera. Obviously I want the best pictures out of it that I can get. I don't want... I don't want some electronic nanny in the software stepping in and going, mm, maybe he only wants to print postage stamp size photographs that, you know, maybe kind of rival the output that you got from the Game Boy camera and printer. I don't want that. <clears throat> no, I want the best that this can give me. It was, you know, <laughs> new digital camera, especially back in the day. Well, it's not now, it's a very old digital camera, but you know what I mean. 
So literally what this what this software does, as you can see now, takes all the photographs and it literally unceremoniously dumps them onto your computer. Um, in fact, the amount of time it's taken it, it kind of reminds me of um, hot syncing a PDA in a way. It kind of certainly has that feel. Now the photographs have been downloaded, so what I, I, I love that. The different noises this interface makes, actually. You've got the photographs downloaded, so you can double click and you can view them. I love the um, the uh, sounds this makes as you mouse over and press the buttons. And the about screen I think is probably one of the best ones of all. I, d I don't know why I like that. But that's how the Slim 3000 software does it. You basically get the photographs and you can transfer them to an album. Isn't that nice? You know, I could make an album. Um, but where are the photographs in the meantime? Nobody knows! I guess I could say that. That's, 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 that's nice. Yeah, thanks. Oh! <laughs> I, I don't know. Where, where are the photographs? Just where are the photographs? My pictures? Nope. MD7466? Nope. Probably somewhere in... on the hard drive. And I know I could go save as and then just kind of save them all to a folder in my pictures. Why should I have to do that? They've already been downloaded to the computer once. Luckily, Windows XP, like I've said, it had a much better way of downloading and sorting your photographs. And because it had inherent support for USB mass storage device, well, devices, um, it could do this in a much more pleasant way. So, as you notice, when I plugged in the camera, this came up. Um, the disk... This disk or device contains more than one type of content. So I could uh, copy um, pictures to a folder on my computer, view a slideshow, print the pictures, uh, play the content using either Windows Media Player or VLC Media Player, or literally open the folder to view the files. Now what I would always do is click this. Copy the pictures to a folder on my computer. Click OK. And then you have the scanner and camera wizard. So basically what it would say is, um, this wizard helps you copy pictures from your camera, scammer, uh, scanner, camera, oh, no, camera, scanner, or other device to your computer, your network, or the web. Um, if you prefer, you can, you can work directly from your device this option is recommended for advanced users only. Well, I consider myself an advanced user, but I like the way that this works. So the next screen, you do have literally all the photographs. And um, I don't know what happened here or here. <laughs> These corrupted ones? Never had that before. But, um, you know, from here you could select photographs to upload or download. You can even rotate photographs from here if you needed to. Um, and then you can look at the properties of photographs. Basically, what I usually do is just kind of keep all the photographs selected click next. Now by default it will save the photographs to a folder called picture in my pictures and you can have it delete from the device after copying them 
Again, that's not something I normally do. I usually take care of uh, deleting and file management like that on the camera. But what I usually like to do is use the drop down menu and well, basically have the uh, date that um, the transfer took place. So in this case, 2017-09-07. We're going to keep the default name of picture. Now I used to like to do it that way because it would then give me a built-in way of organising my photographs. You know, every time I would uh, go to the computer with my camera um, from there on out, you know, I'd select the option for the wizard and it would remember that I picked the date option the last time and, well, it just makes photographs easier to organise. I mean, okay, it would be nice if they were sorted by the date they were taken, but, um, oh, here's a corrupted photo. <laughs> Let's skip that, skip that, behave. Another thing about this digital camera, which, um, you know, compared to the uh, Kodak MC3, the Kodak MC3 camera had a clock. This one doesn't. So while newer software can pick up the date and time from the Kodak MC3 digital camera's photos, it guesses with these ones. So, you know, for the mid 2000s, I've got a lot of photographs, some dated with sensible dates like 1st of January 2007, even though, you know, that was uh, kind of far fetched when I was downloading the photographs in 2004. But then I have photographs well into the future, like stuff from 2087. That's, yeah, no, that's that's not right. <laughs> so it, um, if I try and look at my photo photographs in the Windows uh, Photos app on Windows 10, it will show all the photographs that I took with this digital camera as being way out into the future. So now that I've downloaded the photographs, it says, what do you want to do? Publish the photographs to a website. Um... Order prints of these pictures from a photo printing website. Do you remember when that was a thing? Actually, I wonder. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at this. See if you can still do that. Can I order a print of a photograph? I don't think I ever used this service when it was active. So let's take this one of a cup of tea. See if I can order a print. Ah, no printing companies available. Oh well. <laughs> So I'm just going to do what I always used to do, nothing, I'm finished working with these pictures. 34 pictures were copied. To see the pictures on your computer or network, click the location. When you clicked finish, there were the photographs on the machine. So I guess we could take a look at some of them now. And we start to see... The quality of the camera, I'm just going to try and adjust the laptop so you can see them as best you can. Um, to be honest, the exposure it always seemed to kind of take misty photographs. And sometimes the colours from this camera, they were pretty dull, I have to be honest. Um... I think I noticed it more on... I mean, these are photographs that I have taken recently, literally for this video. Um, look, and there's the cup of tea, and there you can see it's actually really quite blurred. So that's that's no good. Oh, and there's, there's my uh, Samsung Galaxy f uh, smartphone sitting on a portable charger. Um... That's the uh, Snacky breakfast, that's the Inver Snacky special. I was, it was a nice day that day, so I sat and had breakfast outside. Here's some photographs from Retrofest. Um, and there's me installing Windows XP on the Dell Dimension 4600 after replacing the hard drive. 
there is going to be more retro fest videos coming up um because you know there's stuff that i have done <coughs> this is um this is up at uh, the bridge of dawn kind of uh, it's kind of nice actually So there you go, this is um, all retro fest stuff. So these photos, they're okay. But I think they're okay more for viewing on a screen. These are the 2007 custom belt and the Flying Scots machine. I decided to switch cases with the server again. There you go. <laughs> So that's, that's kind of what it looks like in low lighting. And these are the photos that I've just tried to take now. As you can see, they have not really came out very well at all. I have tried cleaning the lens, but I guess I could give it another once over with a cotton bud. So there you go. So that is this camera, um, and for some reason, the videos they didn't take. Um, but maybe I wonder if they were available in this program. Let's have a look. That is quite strange because it didn't upload the uh, later fold. What's with that? <coughs> oh well. So some of these photos are a bit subpar. But that's not necessarily a problem because if I wanted to, I could use a piece of photo editing software to basically straighten them out and improve them and what have you. And what better program to use than one that came with the camera, right? Well, let's see. So, you lead Photo Explo uh, Express. And it's telling me to register. Don't show this again. So, what you have is... What you have is a file manager type interface. You can go in and take a look at the photographs. So let's, for example, take this picture of me playing something on my turntable. I think I'm playing um, Queen's jazz album there. So what I can do is edit it can adjust, selection, text, paint, effect, decorate. So let's, let's see if I can adjust it. Smart Enhance. Um, can I do brightness and contrast? Well that seems to have done absolutely nothing. Hue and saturation. That's, I think, slightly better. Focus. Color enhance. There we go. We'll we'll see if that does anything. Kind of. I mean, obviously, if I wanted to do something with it. I could. So we could add, you know, some effects here. I mean, this, all this, this is stuff that you get now on a simple phone app, like Instagram or what have you. But uh, we used to, we used to put all these filters on um, in a post-production kind of way. We used to get the filters and download, we used to get the photos, download them to the computer, and then we could put the filters on like that. 
But not many people did, I don't think. I never did see that being a thing. Quite interestingly enough, probably because people just really didn't have... Didn't really, um... Have an interest in computers to that extent. So we could have, um... Let's try some filters now. So we could have tint, fabric, crumpled pencil, charcoal, watercolour, oil paint, or coloured pencil. Particle, sharpness, lenses, or special. So I guess I could go for weird. See what that does. I've got all different kinds of uh, weird filters that I can try. Now it just looks like an out-of-tune VCR. You know what? That'll do. <laughs> so we could decorate it. <clears throat> Put a wee frame on it. Got different ones that I can choose. Honestly, it does kind of look like... Um, on it, it, it does kind of remind me of the mid-2000 Sony Ericsson phones. You can try different frames. That'd be brilliant if I could have had a frame on here that kind of looks like an old television. Oh well, this one <laughs> will do. Please add a shadow first. Oh well. So there you have it. Um, the selection, the selected file format does not support object saving. Everything will be merged with the base image. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. So there you go. That's uh, photos from this digital camera. For some reason, I couldn't uh, do the videos. But let's have another shot. So what we'll do is we will format this memory card So I have now managed to get a video plus I took some more photographs to see if I could compare the um, 3.1 versus uh, 2.0 megapixel um, sizes. Unfortunately, all the photos I did manage to get, despite my best efforts, were terrible. Anyway, let's have a look at this video. So I'll just play that. This is a video of the Acer Travel Mate 230 taken with the Medion MD7466 digital camera. 
So there you go. That is um, that is a video taken with this camera. Now I think the videos, I think the video is of the same resolution um, on this camera as it is on the um, MC3, i.e. 320 by 240, but I do believe the color palette is much, much better on this camera than it is on the um, on the MC3. So, yep, it is 320 by 240 pixels. Like I said, there does seem to be more colors, more of a color palette on this camera than there does on the Kodak MC3's video mode. If that makes any sense. Anyway, you might be wondering if this software that comes with this digital camera is so awful and believe me it really isn't the best piece of uh, photo transfer software I have ever used then why the hell would I install it? Well this camera does have one more mode up its sleeve that I have yet to talk about. Now to activate this mode it has to be connected to the, the computer with the Slim 3000 software installed. But it's not just simply a case of plugging in the cable this time. What I have to do is first press and hold the shutter button and then plug in the cable. And now the computer has decided it's found yet more hardware. What could it be trying to install? Well, this camera can operate as a webcam and for some reason I can't actually find my other tripod otherwise I would actually uh, mount it on there and um, well, use it as a webcam. So <clears throat> obviously with this mounted on a tripod or even just sat on top of a CRT monitor, this What, let's 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 try mounting it on. Let's try balancing it on the laptop screen because that'll work. Um, but yeah, we now have a live webcam image, so I can either use this in a video conferencing program such as Skype, or I could take stills or videos. So, for example. Uh, video record I could do oh, I could basically do any quality I wanted to right up to 20 frames per second that I would like to see this is a video taken with the Medion digital camera MD7466 uh, while it is being used as a webcam connected to the Acer Travelmate 230. Um, and, and now I just literally want to... I just try want to stop the video. How, how, how would I go about doing that? Stop record. Well, isn't that nice? Anyway, not only could I do that, I can also take a still. So let's let's try that, shall we? That's a horrible picture. I look like a criminal. 
and the um, and the photo mode on this webcam doesn't make me look any better. Anyway, <laughs> so that is the other mode of this camera. Unfortunately, I never used this mode either. But then, I never had my computer connected to the internet in such a way that I could, um, well, that I would actually be able to make use of this feature. Um, well, I had this as my main digital camera. And to be honest, when I started using webcams, I did actually go for a 1.3 megapixel model. So, yeah. Anyway, I think, um, I think this should do it for this video. So this is the Medion MD7466 digital camera. So what did I think of it? Well, back in the day, it was fantastic. It was my first digital camera to take pictures that whose resolution could be measured in megapixels. Um, it was difficult to get a good shot, if I'm honest. Um, a good steady shot. But, um, you know, I did have some pictures, at least from when I used this as my main digital camera. And, um, you know, I still have them today. And it, this camera's, well, the Kodak MC3 did come to France with me. But um, this one followed me to a bunch of other places. Mostly East Yorkshire, if I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> and, um, you know, it went with me to South Wales for the, uh, for a, uh, for a biology field trip for A-level biology. Um, <clears throat> it, uh, also followed me to Hull University, but wasn't my main digital camera for too long afterwards, because, well, not too long after I, uh, started at university, I actually got a Nokia N73 mobile phone, which um, actually took much better pictures. Now, one of these days I would love to do a review on a Nokia N73 mobile phone, but that would, uh, that would mean I would have to acquire one, and um, I just don't have the money just yet to do that. But, uh, you know, if, if, uh, when, if um, I cross paths with an N73 at some point, that is something that I would very much like to cover. It would probably bring back all the nostalgia from my first year or two at university. But there you have it. So this is um, my old Medion digital camera. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to the Flying Scotsman YouTube channel. If you're looking for more things The Flying Scotsman, you can also follow The Flying Scotsman YouTube channel Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. To see my latest video, click on the link within the browser window. In the meantime, thank you for watching and please do feel free to join me for my next video. Cheerio bye.